Hello, this video is about the process of creating our tabletop history series. Uh, if you haven't seen the first two episodes, I would recommend uh, going back and having a look at those so you know what I'm talking about. But basically, it's a way of condensing a uh, period of history down into a five minute video. And it's really visually interesting and it's a great way of, of keeping those facts um, stored in your head. Well, it has been for me at least. Um, hopefully it will be for you as well. I've received some really great feedback uh, from the video. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I will continue to make these as long as I can. And hopefully this is something that's gonna be uh, beneficial to parents, teachers, and anybody who wants to learn a bit about history themselves and then teach it on to younger people as well. So firstly, talk about the topic and how I choose which topic I want to tackle. Um, because I tried to condense it into a five minute video, it's really tricky to explain a whole period of history. So I can't talk about the whole of World War II or about the um, entirety of the um, kind of the uh, Viking era because that's just far too broad. It's a lot easier to pick a certain person or a short event over the course of a few days. So the first episode that I looked at was the Great Fire of London and the second episode was about the life of William Shakespeare. And creating those videos themselves has taught me an awful lot. And I still remember those facts now, even though I filmed those like weeks and weeks ago. So it's really, really effective. And today I'm working on the, the last few parts of the Mayflower story, which is gonna be episode three. The Mayflower story is probably one that's less familiar to British students than um, the Great Fire of London or the life of William Shakespeare. Um, but this is the story. Basically what I've done is I've taken all of my notes that I've made over the past um, few months and done even more research on my laptop. And I've condensed it down into a page and a half. I tried to limit myself to about 750 words, um, which is about a page and a half, and translate down into about five minutes worth of video. And the way of doing that is I tried to create a general overview. So when I first did this, it was probably about three pages long and then I need to condense it down to make it more bite-sized and make it more interesting. So I put a few interesting facts in there as well, just to kind of keep it interesting. And once I've done that, I will start sourcing props and I will storyboard it so that I know exactly what I'm doing. And then I'll start making the video. So I've just finished highlighting and adding notes to my script, which is gonna give me a much better idea of how the video is gonna look and which props I need to source. Luckily, there are a few props that I have now that I think will be used in lots of different videos for lots of different ways. Uh, for example, a world map that is really, really useful for most videos, particularly something like this, which is very geography based. Um, that's something that's going to be making an appearance on this video uh, for definite. Another thing is my uh, monarchy flashcards. Those are really, really handy, particularly as there's a bit of a crossover going on here because this um, story has James I in it, who features in the William Shakespeare story. And the Mayflower story actually only happens about 40 years before um, the Great Fire of London as well. So all of these stories just so happen to be in um, a very short period of history, um, about 60, 70 years. So it creates a bit of consistency and helps you link up these stories and creates a, a greater context to um, English history around that. Um, some other things that I've been using as well. This episode is gonna feature um, my finger characters as well. That was a silly idea that I had for my first video um, with the Great Fire of London, the bakers were just drawn on my fingers and um, it was very, very silly, but I got some <laughs> good comments about that. People seem to remember that. So um, that's gonna, I'm gonna use my fingers to create the passengers, some of the passengers on the Mayflower. So that's another little silly thing that I've developed through practicing it. I think creating a really great backdrop is important in a video like this. So use your table, but put something on the table, create a, use a tablecloth, use um, some old paper, use something textured so that it's just a bit more interesting than a normal table. Or if you've just got a really nice wooden table, that's um, really nice as well. Drawings as well. Um, I find that 
using drawing, I am awful at drawing, but if I can use something really simple like a drawing to illustrate my point, it saves a lot of time and hassle in finding the props. I would suggest not using drawings all the time because it can make it really unclear, unless you happen to be really good at drawing, in which case, go for it. But I'm not good at drawing, so I use props for that. So um, if you can't find props, I would suggest drawing or creating really simple illustrations for that. Um, other really useful things is using um, wedding rings because a lot of these stories feature uh, marriages. Uh, lollipop sticks are really handy as well to create wooden structures on the thing because they can just create a nice outline for um, structures and they're just really handy to have around. Really, really useful things like that. I'm just looking at what else I've got on here. Um, look, I've been really lucky with this one because uh, this was a part of a research project that I went to America just before the lockdown happened and I picked up a lot of great resources there. So I'm gonna be using those in the video. But for other ones, you just gotta be creative. And I find that if you're being creative, that's where your best ideas come from. So I would say if you've got the resources, use them. If not, get really creative and just strip things back really, really simply because the simple ideas are what stick the most normally. Once I have the footage, then I get onto the last part of um, producing the video, which is the editing. Um, this means that I have to take probably about 20 minutes worth of footage and compress it down into five minutes um, or less. I haven't stuck to that rule every time, but that's my aim. Um, so I need to try to take all this information and cram it so that um, it's really fast moving. Because if you put videos like this onto Facebook and YouTube and there are pauses or breaks, um, you lose people's attention like that. So you need to be on it and make sure all the information goes through um, before people switch off or flick away or whatever they do. So um, that is the, the key part of this process is making sure that it's really quick and uh, slick. Um, I've also been sending the script backwards and forwards to uh, a few consultants and experts about this topic to make sure that um, in the process of taking this massive story and compressing it into five minutes, I'm not um, being offensive or uh, missing out any of the key points, particularly on a topic like this. Basically, I just need to make sure that I'm not losing too much in this process whilst keeping it really engaging and fun for um, children and young people here. And then also I need to add uh, music and sound effects and things like that to help um, educate, also to help things stick in your mind. Uh, I know that using lots of different sensors is a great way of um, keeping things um, sticky and sticking to your mind. So using loads of sounds and um, music and things like that is a great way of doing that. Then I also need to create captions as well, which makes the videos more accessible to more people. It's a very time consuming process, but um, this is where all of this creativity comes together and we get a final finished product at the end of it, fingers crossed. So wish me luck and hopefully you will be seeing the Make Wild video very soon.